Hello, welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today we'll be talking about DLL injections. So if you've ever wondered how mods and games are made or how you can modify third-party software functionality, we can use DLL injections as one of the methods to accomplish that. So what is a DLL? DLL stands for Dynamic Link Library, which is a file format that allows programmers to reuse functions, resources, and to maintain modularity during programming. Now let's take a look at how DLL loading works in action, which is crucial in understanding how we can inject a DLL into a process. So let's assume there's a process named process A. To start running, it needs a DLL named something.dll. To do that, it'll usually call a function like load library with that DLL name as an argument and some other arguments, which we're just going to ignore for now. This will get the operating system to start searching for this DLL in a well-defined order. Also, side note, this ordered search can be used for a type of DLL hijacking known as DLL order hijacking, which we'll talk about later. But anyways, after this DLL is found, it's loaded in the memory of the process. What we want to do usually in most types of DLL injections is basically this whole process, but during runtime. This process is usually done by the loader of the operating system. DLL injections aren't very complicated. For example, here's a sample of a simple implementation of a DLL injection. Um, it's fine if you don't understand it now. We'll dive deeper into it together if you keep watching, but if you don't want to stick around, even though I think you should, you should stay. There's an associated article about DLL injections you can read that's linked below. Today's video was sponsored by Malcor.io. Scanning files for unknown threats has become essential, yet the steps to accomplish this remains complex and demanding of resources. Malcor provides a new approach to malware analysis. It was designed to automate this process and all of it can be done online within a sandbox which is able to process samples within seconds. Malcor hunting allows users to look for threat intel. Users will be able to hunt by providing the IP address or Yara rule. Malcor also provides a number of scan options to run on uploaded files. Standard scans include the ability to check for file similarities using code reuse, there's an option to analyze domains, and you can also perform analysis on an executable. Pro scans allow you to perform a binary diff onto binary files, and there's also an option that gives you access to Malcor's threat feed and allows you to gather data from it. But those are only some of the options, there are many more that you can choose from to fit your needs. Malcor offers affordable account options for you to choose from that would best cater to you. Different tiers gives you different file upload allowances, hunts, and scans. But you can start by signing up for a free account today at malcor.io. Before we get into different methods of DLL injections, there are different topics that you should learn to help you understand DLL injections better. The first thing you should learn is the basics of Windows architecture. Stuff like processes, threads, the Win32 API, stuff like that. Luckily, there's a Windows internals playlist that's linked below in the description. You'll also need to have a basic understanding of DLL loading, DLL mapping, learning how to hijack threads, and you'd also need to learn about shellcode execution methods, which we also have a series for and articles which are linked below. Now let's have a look at the DLL injection process. Suppose there's a target process we want to inject our DLL into, and we have our process which is already running on the target machine. So in order to inject a DLL, there are generally three steps that are taken. First is gaining control over the target process, and once we have control, then we load our malicious DLL into the target process. And lastly, we start executing our malicious code from the malicious DLL. So really the 101 of DLL injection is control the process, usually using the open process API, then load the malicious DLL into the process using load library or LDR load library. Then finally, we execute this code using a shellcode execution method. Now we'll look at the different methods or types of DLL injections and look at an overview of each one. The most common and effective ways of DLL injection are these four. The first one is using the load library API. Next is load library X API, the LDR load DLL API, or just ditching everything and doing manual mapping. You can learn more about these deeply in this article named DLL injection methods that's linked below in the description. The first method is using load library. This method just requires you to get control of a process using some method like the open process API to get the handle of that process, and then allocating and writing the path of the DLL into the virtual memory of the process, and then creating a thread of the load library API, which loads the DLL from this path. Then we have this next method, which uses load library X. Don't confuse it with the previous method. The names are pretty similar and it's almost the same as the last one, except it gives you more flexibility about how you want your DLL to be loaded. The third method is using the LDR load DLL API. This one is a bit complicated, but essentially what it does more or less, the same thing as the previous two methods, but at a lower level and offers you even more control. And then we have manual mapping and this method is even more complicated because it requires you to write your own implementation of a DLL loader. As you can see on the screen, it takes 11 different steps to accomplish, but worry not, there is a tutorial series 
other articles and videos on this and this tutorial can teach you about everything from step one to step 11 in a very simple way. Another thing you would want to learn is to avoid detections from antivirus or anti-cheat software. The most common method uses write process memory is easily detectable and to avoid that we have a few tutorials like this one and this one to bypass anti-cheats. And after learning about injecting the DLL, you'd also like to eject it in most cases to avoid detection, and that you can do by reading this article. If you wanna do this in any other language other than C, as all the tutorials that were mentioned were in C or C++, you can check out this tutorial, which teaches DLL injection in C Sharp. If you're a Python lover, we have this tutorial using Python. And if you're a memory safety type of person, you can read this article on DLL injection using REST. And if you don't wanna go through all the hassle of dealing with the technical details, you can use an injector, which will do a lot of the work for you. The top three DLL injectors are our in-house made guided hacking injector. And not to be biased, this might be the best one in the market. And the one we recommend as it was made with the loving hands of guided hacking. And then there's the extreme injector, which you can also use and then Xenos injector. You can learn about these injectors in detail in this post. And if you specifically want to deal with Unity games, then you can check out our article on the top five best mono injectors. And finally, if you want a stealth and new method to inject your DLL, you can read this article, which explores and teaches you about DLL proxying, which is also linked in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you again for watching. Can't wait to see you again next time.